In this presentation, we will take a look at a sales journal for a merchandising company. When recording transactions related to a sales journal, we will be recording transactions for sales into the sales journal, those being journal entries that are typically used when we have a system done by hand rather than an automated system. So a sales journal will be used typically when we're having more of a manual system. It is good to know this for a automated system as well because the automated system one might want to run reports that are similar to the sales journal and two it's good to know different types of formats for the accounting process to know what's the same and what is different so that that will better help us to understand any type of system we are using remember that the sales journal is typically looking at sales type of transactions but more specifically it's looking for sales transactions on account or transactions that are dealing with uh, sales that were made, revenue being recorded, but cash not being received. Instead, we will be debiting accounts receivable. It's a very specific type of journal uh, in that we always have the same transactions. So we're going to have the debit to accounts receivable and the credit to sales. Now, if we sell inventory, then we could have another uh, column here on every transaction, which will record the second component of the sales uh, type transaction when we sell inventory. That being the decrease in the inventory, credit to inventory, and the related expense of uh, selling that inventory in order to help generate revenue, that going to cost of goods sold. When we record the sales journal, we're going to enter these data in uh, during the month. It's going to save us a lot of time because we're going to enter one line item per transaction rather than having four line items for a, for a, a normal journal entry each time we record something then recording that to the general ledger, then making the trial balance for it. Then at the end of the month, we'll sum up these columns and we'll make the journal entry, making a one journal entry instead of a journal entry every time we make a sale. Note we will be doing this in our case for a month. We could be doing it for a day or a week. Uh, we will do it for a month and then sum up at the end of that time period and then make that one journal entry at the end of the time period. Then uh, we'll record this journal entry for the entire month's worth of data to the general journal, the general ledger accounts. This just being one account, but to the general ledger accounts. And then we will generate or see the effect on the trial balance of our information. So note that uh, the information that we record in the sales journal will not report, be reported in the financial statements or the trial balance until the end of the month. So we're going to record these sales. They're all going to be the same, so we'll just list out the sales here. Uh, this journal works best when we have a lot of similar types of sales. So when, if we have a lot of transactions during the day, we make the same type of inventory sale. If we're selling the same type of thing, then the sales journal works well. So on 717, we're going to say a customer uh, P company. Sales 720. Cost 554. So notice how much shorter this, this journal would be than the journal entry. If we wrote this out in a journal entry, we would have to debit accounts receivable, credit sales, that being similar to a service company type of transaction for the sale, and then debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for the cost of the goods sold, reducing the inventory and recorded the related to expense for it. Uh, here, we just have one line item to do that. We are not going to be posting this to the general uh, ledger, but we will, we will at the end once we sum everything up for the entire time period. But as we go, we're going to post to the uh, accounts receivable subsidiary ledger because we're going to have to do this uh, line by line no matter what. So we might as well do it as we go. So we're going to say that this 720, uh, we sold it to P Company. Here's P Company here in our subsidiary ledger. So we're going to say it goes up by 722. 720. Next transaction, and this will all be pretty repetitive. This will be the same transaction, and then we'll sum it up at the end. So we'll just do a few of these. P Company again, we're going to sell 425. Cost then is going to be 327. So the sales price that we're, we have, 425, it cost us 327. Once again, this representing a debit to accounts receivable, credit to sales or revenue or income. And this representing a debit to cost of goods sold and credit to inventory with just these two numbers. Then we're going to record that not to the general ledger, but to the subsidiary ledger for the 425 owed. And that's going to be for P Company, bringing the balance up from 720 by 425 to 1145. Next transaction on, three, on 730, 
Uh, S Company, we sold 425 again, cost also once again 327. Same transaction here, just a new vendor. We're going to post the, our new customer. We're going to post this not to the general ledger, but to the subsidiary ledger. We will be posting to the general ledger at the end once we sum up this column of numbers. So we'll post this over here to S Company in the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger, bringing the zero balance up by 425 to 425. Next, uh, we have the same uh, icon for M Company. We're going to skip this one just to total it up here. So 730 M Company, 500 and 385. And then we're just going to sum this, this columns up. So we got the two columns. And note, we only have a couple transactions here. But even in some companies, even if we did this on, on a day-by-day -day basis, depending on what we're selling, the quantity that we sell, we could have a lot of transactions, even if we just do the sales journal daily or weekly. Uh, in this case, we got it monthly. So we're going to take the 720 plus the 425 plus the 425 plus the 500 gives us the 2070 for the sales and the accounts receivable. On the other side, we got the 554, the 327, the 327, and the 385, giving us the 1,593. If we record this transaction, we'll record it just as the sales uh, journal tells us to, debiting accounts receivable, crediting sales, this being our typical merchandising type transaction when we sell merchandise, we debit the accounts receivable, we credit the sales, sales is revenue. Accounts receivable is an asset, assets go up with a debit balance, we're going to do the same thing to it in order to make it go up, another debit. Sales is a, is a um, revenue account, uh, revenue or income, has a credit balance, we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing to it, another credit. Then we'll do the second component as if there's two separate journal entries here. This is typically the way we see this when we are doing this by hand because it helps us to visualize the sales and AR portion and the cost of goods sold and inventory portion. Uh, if you see it in a computer system or some textbooks may have the two debits on top and record this all in one transaction since it is taking place at the same time. So this is going to be a debit or to cost of goods sold, a credit to inventory. I typically think of the inventory first because when constructing the journal entry, uh, inventory is something tangible. I can visually uh, m imagine it going down, and therefore I know it's a debit balance account, so we're going to make it go down, doing the opposite thing to it. And then we'll debit the cost of goods sold, it being an expense, uh, a type of expense, and the expenses only go up in the debit direction. We will increase the expense, making net income go down. So here's our journal entry for the month. We will be recording based on this data we recorded during the month. Then we'll record that to the general ledger. So we'll just look at the accounts that will be affected here in the general ledger. Uh, accounts receivable, we'll start with this accounts receivable, 2070. Taking accounts receivable from zero up by 2070 to 2070. Then we've got the sales, taking the sales uh, from zero up by 2070 to, 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 to 2070. And then we're going to the cost of goods sold. It has a zero starting balance. We're bringing it up by 1,193 to 1,593, 1,593. And then we have the inventory, and it is going to negative, zero going down negative. Now, the reason it's negative here is because we are recording this end result in the sales journal before doing the purchases journal. And uh, since they're all happening at the end of the month, then... Um, it's, we, we just record one before the other. Once we record the other, we should, of course, have a debit balance after we, we record all journals as of the end of the month. So this will flip back to a debit once that happens. Then we can see that information on the trial balance. So here's the 2070 here. Here it is on the trial balance. Here's the 2070 in sales on the general ledger. Here it is on the trial balance. Here's the 1,593 cost of goods sold on the general ledger. Here's the 1,593 cost goods sold on the trial balance. Here's the 1,593 of inventory general ledger negative balance. And here it is on the trial balance. Note that uh, we also want to compare the subsidiary ledger. Note what we're looking at is the accounts receivable uh, account is what we're working with primarily or a lot of in the purchase or the sales journal. The sales journal could really be called the accounts receivable or sales and accounts receivable or sales on accounts journal. This number here represents how much money is owed to the company, but it doesn't tell us who owes us the money. 
the detail in the general ledger tells us the dates that it happened and because we're, we're using a sales journal that's uh, really only given us a limited information too we'd have to go back to the sales journal to see the dates of the sales within that time period but either one doesn't tell us who owes us the money for that we need a subsidiary ledger and so we recorded this subsidiary ledger as we go Note that if we added all the accounts up for P company, 1,145, for S company, 425, for M company, 500, that adds up to 2,070, which of course matches what's on the general ledger and what's on the trial balance.